How are you doing, Ralph here, Ralph for Customs? Last one of the year, I think. Definitely last one before Christmas. A little bit of this and that. Let's follow along and I'll see you at the end for a big thank you, everyone. Yeah, so let's do it. issue with the huh, design of a slight design flaw in it, not having a front mudguard because going to my mate Wayne front mudguards are for pussies <coughs> now my other two bikes have got a front mudguard but if you ride this in the rain trust me you get fucking waterboarded so the plan is we've got the tool roll look, brand new obvious Sticks out like bollocks on a bulldog fucking tool roll. That'll break up some of the flow and hopefully soften and meld into a more lovable shape along its journey. And then we're going to strap... We're going to have a strap on the handlebars <laughs> um, and I'll put a dry bag with my sleeping bag or tent or whatever like. This is just for going away with a lads like... On a regular, you've got that tool roll, fucking breaks the flow, suck it up, buttercup. Going away, we'll have some of the something I'm taking away across there. But it obscures the fucking headlight, uh, the speedo. It will obscure the speedo. Now, not really an issue. You can go with the flow so you don't get caught speeding. My only issue is that I run out of petrol every 60 miles if I don't fill up. So I need to keep a check on that. And my solution is to use a quad lock with the phone that I'm recording this on in place and have that as a route planner or a speedo or a whatever I want to use. So, no problem. Now, I got to thinking that maybe having a thousand pounds worth of fucking digital phone computer in your hand type technology getting waterboarded along with you is not good for it. So, the solution is is cord lock waterproof wireless charger that we're going to fit um, now I'm not in love with it it's fucking big chunk of shit like but it will only be on when I'm going away and once I get gone, gone away I can take a fucker off when I unpack my luggage if you like I can take the speedo drive off using the uh, allen keys that will be in the tool roll and I can tuck the wire in behind the fucking petrol tank or somewhere like that, you know. So that's my plan. My plan is we fit that, but it's a USB fed. They assume that you're on some kind of fucking spaceship bike that's got a USB outlet. Well, the you old know, fucking triumph has got a shit like that, has it? So knock on, one job leads on to another, on to another. We need to fit one of these, look. This is, get off there, this is a USB type, yeah, charger, and, as luck would have it, it's got the same connection as my trickle charger, so I could have the whole loom of this, detachable, I could make up a loom with the necessary parts, so, silicon that in there, or bag it over or whatever, I'll put some ink shrink over it or something and then run that up to the handlebars and fit it with rubber uh, cable ties. That's my plan. So when I get it, I can take it all off, chuck it in my tent and put it on before we leave. Sorted. You know, <clears throat> the more I look at it, the more I think I might elect to wiring it in hard-wired like... Um, 
what we got. This, uh, we've got this chisel that comes with the battery connections on, which I can cut off and shorten and do what I like with. So I'm maybe gonna wire them together, shorten them and connect it directly to the battery with the fuse and have that in the electrics box and then run this wire up with the rest of the wires um, and just have it come out come out here and then when I'm not using it shove it back down the hole like it, tuck it in I might do that <coughs> because the thought of unplugging and unclipping and undoing and everything when you get there is a pain in the fucking arse you can leave that on for now like this is a fugly thing like this this is a fugly thing um, but if it suits me when it's wet. I mean, if the forecast is dry and sunny, it's just leave it off, won't you? If you're going a long way, you whack it on. So, yeah, can't make my mind up. Okay, so I can't really show, show you the phone in situ because I'm recording um, on it, but I've fucked off the idea of having it hard wired in. It's not something I want to add to the bike, like, because it's a seldom used and it's a lot of fucking about and it's untidy like so what I've done I've used these rubber reusable old school cable ties so I can get into a better ear look so the old if it'll focus there you go the old the wire and you just pop them off when you've done it just pop off it was fucking the monkey or one of the ghosts in Renza Ghosts pop off you just pop them off and then I can take the whole thing off and it plugs in down the bottom here where my trickle charger plugs in uh, and it sits down in top of that top engine mount now I don't think that's perfect we could probably do with another pop-off clamp uh, just there like sorry just there filming it badly just hold it in place so I could cable tie this up to itself like that, that'd hold it in place, I guess, wouldn't it? Stop it fucking about too much. Um, we'll see, we'll see. But that's it. Then when I get there, we we'll undo that. We pop off and take off the rubber clamps. Uh, and then we take this off with its Allen key under there and go about our way until the return journey. That's the idea. Or we leave it on all weekend and take it off when we're zapping out and about. I think that's about the best way of doing it. You see, with that or relocate the speedo, which I don't want to do. First of all, I've milled a, a relief for the bracket underneath there, and that's going to leave it a, an unused relief, which looks fucking uh, scrappy. And where would you put it? You know, you could have it here, I guess, or there, but it's an afterthought. It looks like an afterthought. I could have it off the engine like people do, down one side, but again, it looks like a bit of an afterthought, so... I think I'm happy with the uh, waterproof, fast-charging phone mount, detachable, one-off. And that'll get us where we want to go, and that'll allow us to strap something across there, like my tent in a dry bag or something, you know. So I've got a bit of a shield against the water. That's all it's for. If only we lived in California, hey. There'd be no helmets and no fucking need for doing what I'm doing. But I'm sure you'll agree. It's a good workaround. And once I take it off, you wouldn't know it were there like, because it won't be there. If that makes sense. And with this put away, I'm really pleased with that. So we've got a fully equipped tool roll. Um, not touch wood, not that I've needed any tools, but you never know, and someone you're with might, you know. Anyway, with a fully equipped tool roll and the uh, old phone mount, waterproof charging phone mount, the phone itself is waterproof, um, we're assured of at least trying out the fucking... the solution. So, that's all tidied up on trickle charge put away 
Uh, Harry the Bastard needs a new fucking battery strap. He's under there lurking. Oh, bless him. This is absolutely <laughs> the apple of my eye. To be fair, I'm smitten with all my bikes. As uh, anyone that's ever spent more than three minutes with me will attest to. But Harry's the fucking star of the show, like. Um, put away for winter. I need to do an oil and filter change before the start of the season, which is a few months away, so no worries. The diner's there, stored up. Mr. Clint's ready for the new year. Our todder is nothing but grace, graciously patient because he knows I'm fighting against it and so on and so forth. So we're pretty much tidied up. Uh, geez, Graham's there is going to go back on the bench upon our return. Once I've fitted the handlebars to our rustics which is going to need new cables that I'm waiting for. Um, I'm not sure about the clutch cable, but it's definitely these new throttle cables and a new brake line, which I can make up, uh, but I'm waiting for the bits. Machines are cleaned down. Oh. Milling machine, ready for the Christmas break. Lathe's got a little bit of this, that and the other on it. Let's just pop these away. These are, uh, that's where I sit the tripod that you watch me on when I'm recording stuff. I'm not that out of there. Uh, I can't do it one-handed, I don't think. I don't, no, can't do it one-handed. Uh, and I'll put those away and get that last bit of detritus. Detritus, as T-Bag says. Little bastard <clears throat> sorted. Little Atlas. All put to bed. And the fab bench ready for my return. Alexa, canteen off. And here's the view look on the commute home. Oh, I'm gonna have to fuck off, I'm in the way. So, that's the valley that I live on the side of. And a quick go up the road. Till we run out of road. And there's the old farmstead. A few days. So, I've just fitted the dial to this. Let me just flip it over. Look. I won't touch the movement with my fingers because that's a big no-no. I've just cleaned up and fitted the dial to this watch movement. Um, I've completely disassembled. I'm taking it all to bits. It's a photograph of it in bits. I'll put up. Um, and the one thing I was missing, there's a little spring that sits in there on this bit there. That's called the click. And what that makes the noise when you wind it up, that clicking noise. And basically it's a, it's a non-reverse, it's a ratchet that attaches to this, engages, sorry, with this ratchet wheel. No surprises there. That means you can wind the mainspring to power the watch without it unwinding itself. Um, so I had to make one. So I've made one. Tiny little half a millimetre diameter, so 20 thou, maybe 15 thou. In bananas this wire is that sits in a loop there that engages with a little peg underneath this circular bit this click it's got a little tooth there that engages with the ratchet wheel so <clears throat> that was the final part and it's i made it and fixed it and now it's running and it's keeping really good time for being 130 years old you know uh, and there's the case sorry there's the Dial cleaned up, enamel dial, so quite tough. Clean it up with denture uh, steridant, which is convenient because I've got tubes of that shit. And it brings that enamel up, lovely. What I need to do next is fit the hands that are in this little case. Um, and then we can case it up. And the rest of the case is, is in here, love. I've cleaned that up as well, giving that a polish. There is some uh, 
really rather deep scratches in this top corner. Uh, and there's another layer underneath there that protects the works when you first open the back. And they were proper scored up where people have uh, used a knife to open the case. There's a lever point there that you should use a case opener. Um, but over the years it's had a bit of abuse and it was quite badly scratched. So I've given it a buff up. And there's loads of little fine scratches on there on camera, but in real life it's uh, as clean as you'd want it to be for 130 years old. So we can put the movement, well, we can put the movement in the case first of all, and then we'll fit the hands and the glass, the crystal is called, needs to go in there. Now there are glue in, I've got the glass, the glass is here, in there, all clean and, and safe and and waiting for the, the proper adhesive to come. It's not a press fit. I've looked online and I can't find one that's fractionally bigger to be a press fit. So uh, I'm gonna glue it in, which is perfectly, perfectly fine. But that will then be my first ever total strip down service repair, in effect, we're making that spring, and a light restoration of a 130 year old pocket watch. Happy days. There you have it, look. These tiny, these watch hands. It's my finger end, look. You can see it. Yeah. These hands are actually made of steel and then they're heat treated to blue. Just with heat, look, and they're so gorgeous. That enamel dial is really cleaned up lovely with a steridon, with a dent of tablets. That looks as good as new. Uh, this West End, you can't see it under the hands, but it's West End Watch Company made this in Switzerland. Um, and I'm guessing it's 100 years old, you know, 1920s, maybe a little bit earlier. But it's uh, unusually, it's got a stainless steel case, not a, um, not a silver case. There's, there's a watch in bits in there that's absolutely munted. I was waiting for parts for it and then, I've, to be honest, I totally butchered something in it, the, the balance wheel. The, I'm never going to ever find a replacement. And, and changing that, the spindle on it, the staff is called, is a bit beyond my skill set at the minute. So that's uh, that's been shelved, but it's got a beautiful, I don't know where I put it, it's going to be around here somewhere amongst my various... There it is down there, it's got a beautiful silver case that dates from the 1890s. I didn't want, I, I was thinking of fitting this movement in that silver case, but I wanted to keep it original, so I should have polished up the stainless. Anyway, that uh, leaves the glass, the crystal, to bond into the, this bevel, uh, bezel, sorry, I always get mixed up, and then we can press the bezel on, and then the watch is fucking a little hypo cement, and a bit of a clean up campaign afterwards. <clears throat> there you go, we, we have fitted a focus. The crystal. Oh, the glass, the original glass back in. The first vintage, well it's antique now I guess, uh, pocket watch. This I've gently restored, it's a bit smeary actually, hold on, let me just do it on this super duper uh, high end polish oh, leg. So, there we go, so, yeah, sorted. Right, I'm in the surgery. I'm just about to go in and have a foreign body removed from me and so wish me luck. Right, so, if my voiceover me has done his job properly. I've come out, they wouldn't let me record in there, but there you go. I'm now minus my negligent discharge, uh, which was attached by fibrous tissue, so it didn't go running off around the inside of me hand like, and I've had it out and job done. Just happy days. A few days to convalesce, 48 hours or so. Don't use it for much, don't get it wet. There you go. Uh, so ends another fucking year, and what a year it's been. If you've followed along, you've have seen the myriad and diversity of the various uh, projects that I've been privileged enough to be a part of, yeah? I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed sharing. I've really enjoyed the support. Um, 
and I've really enjoyed becoming part of this YouTube community or more ingrained in this YouTube community if you like because I've been around for a little while now. Um, I just I just want to thank everyone really because although I'd be doing what I'm doing without you I won't be able to share it without you you know what I mean it's just be me watching it which is bollocks nobody's that boy but I suppose people are like but I'm not so what I'm going around the house is to say is that I'm really grateful and I really appreciate all of the support that I've had in this last 12 months and moving forward uh, I'm hoping that the next 12 months things continue to get bigger and better and altogether more fucking chocolatey if you know what I mean so have a wonderful wonderful holiday everyone lots of love to you and yours and here's to a great 2023 I'll catch you soon lots of love to you